Well, I have a background in agriculture working on our family macadamia farm on the sunny coast. So I have an idea of how farmers and small business owners have been affected by the mismanagement of government on local councils, state and federal government levels for a very long time. I was also a maths and science teacher here at Twimber State High School for a bit over a year before being stood down for being unvaccinated. I have plenty of experience talking with community members, parents and students in public settings and I'm always happy to have a chat and listen to people on the streets or anywhere really. My parents can attest to the fact that I was always a very outgoing and extroverted child, never the one to shy away from making new friends with absolute strangers. I used to go up to people and I would wink and say, g'day. I would like to see a politician in our seat here in Groom that wouldn't shy away from the community and who could actively engage with their constituents and hear them out on a regular basis. I think I would make a good representative because I enjoy getting myself out there and listening to new perspectives. I think the platform of the Australian Federation Party is perfect to hold me to that and make our democracy one that is more participatory for the average person who feels voiceless in this country. The Australian Federation Party has gone through a few name and leadership changes since its inception 100 years ago under the name Australian Country Party in 1920, and eventually became the National Country Party in 75 under the leadership of Joe Bjorki Peterson, and changed into the National Party of Australia in 82, and most migrated over to what was to become the Liberal Party and the National Party Alliance under the LNP coalition. Unfortunately, they have since deviated from their original values, supporting farmers and domestic agriculture and manufacturing to become more interested in foreign interests rather than their own constituents. Today, they can be seen selling off Australian land at record-breaking rates to foreign investors, and they're trampling all over the rights of our Aussie farmers with ludicrous exploitative practices such as our coal seam gas exports overseas for bargain prices to countries that pose national security threats to us, organised by the LNP in agreements like CHAFTA, the Chinese Free Trade Agreement, for or leasing out the port of Darwin to China for 99 years. Labour is no better, mind you. They dismantled our domestic manufacturing industries after signing the Lima Declaration in 77 in Peru, which had Australian-made goods go virtually extinct in favour of shipping our natural resources overseas and exploiting third world labour just to manufacture there overseas instead and, and to send our money out of our Australian Commonwealth into circulation in these foreign economies. The Australian Federation Party was formed as a reaction to our safe two-party democratic electoral system and is committed to reinvigorating Australian politics and securing the future of our nation for generations to come. As independent candidates supported by the Australian Federation Party, we are united and bound together under a common banner and ethos where freedom-loving true blue Aussies can coordinate and work together with other freedom parties in order to take votes away from the corrupt major parties and begin to initiate systemic changes. <laughs> Our party is actually in the CADCO Alliance, which is the Commonwealth of Australia De Democratic Cooperative between the Australian Federation Party as well as Rod Cullerton's Great Australia Party and Michael O'Neill's Informed Medical Options Party, or IMOP. And we're also collaborating with other freedom parties such as Pauline Hanson's One Nation and Clive Palmer's United Australia Party here in the Groom electorate. And I'm a big supporter and fan of both candidates for these parties here in Groom, Grant Abraham and Melissa Bannister. And working alongside them during this election has been a great honour, let me tell you. But we are also supporting and preferencing uh, Hester Russell's Australian Values Party, John Humphrey's Liberal, Liberal Democrats, Drew Pavlou's Democratic Alliance, and independent candidates which all seek to end the COVID hysteria and focus on restoring the fractured and fragmented Australian people. All of us freedom parties desire to see our country financially, industrially, politically, and legally sovereign, independent and self-sufficient once again. And this is a common goal of all of ours.
I chose to run in the federal election because I'm fed up with the sorry state of our democracy. I would like to see some out of the box thinking from new blood in politics, from people who are passionate about their community and serving them as best as they can, rather than thinking of how they themselves can best be served by their constituents. I believe our priorities should be people first, not profits first, as it seems to be today. And I don't believe that any of the major parties represent the average Australian anymore. Politicians have become out of touch and they don't understand what really matters. I think we need independence and minor party candidates taking the helm of this federal and state election. And there has never been more reservations towards the majors than this electoral season. People are fed up. Enough is enough. We want our lives back and we want the horrible decisions that have set our country up for financial ruin repealed. Our pollies are among the most highly paid politicians in the world and they don't understand the toll the constant inflation and rising cost of living has on the average person. They don't understand or care how deeply their flippant mandates have affected the lives of people in this country as they are so removed from our strata of society in their insular circles that they don't even bother to see how the knock-on effect ripples on through and, and, through and destroys lives and, and, and drives people to suicide. Many people have no hope for their future, and I would like to change that pattern by making sure that people feel like their voices can be heard and their basic human rights and needs can be secured. I would be honoured to take the initiative to bring the beauty back to the garden city of Toowoomba and make rural areas desirable to settle down and live in again. Many people have no hope for their future, and I would like to change that pattern by making sure that people feel like their voices can be heard and their basic human rights and needs can be secured. I'd be honoured to take the initiative to bring back the beauty of the garden city of Toowoomba and make rural areas desirable to settle down in and live in again. Why don't we have community dances and facilities to keep young people in our region rather than have all of our youth migrate to Brisbane instead? Why do we have 47 5G towers in Toowoomba CBD but as soon as you drive 10 minutes past the outskirts you get frequent dropouts and black spots? Why are we focusing on fixing a centralised water security issue for our growing population instead of investing in rainwater infrastructure on a house-to-house -house residential basis? Why are we developing properties in areas without proper planning like Kearney Springs, a metre above the water table where the houses will warp and become progressively destroyed within a few decades and will need to be entirely rebuilt? Why are we spending money on luxury items when we have a homelessness and unemployment issue that we should be fixing first? Why do we have inedible decorative plants that are often exotic and invasive sh species planted all around town, yet our community gardens, which feeds people for free, is delegated to a tiny unknown location most people haven't even heard of. Why is it that living in the Toowoomba region without a car is nigh impossible as there is barely any public transport to speak of? Why are we still mining for coal seam gas underneath people's private properties like out in J Dolby and John Darien where we are destroying prime agricultural land? Why is it that the public's opinion only matters during the electoral season and then our representatives have gone to obscurity any other time? If Toowoomba votes for me, I would like to address these issues and advocate for systemic changes across the three levels of government to ensure that attention and funding is fairly distributed across our region instead of just in the centralised urban hubs. And I would pledge to make our democracy a more directly involved one so that the voiceless majority can truly be represented by their sitting member.